The Sahara Desert, over 9.2 million square kilometers of some of the most barren land in the world, with the temperatures reaching over 50 degrees Celsius. Animals and plants struggle to survive in these arid conditions which are not meant to sustain life. Inhabited by the pre-dynastic Egyptians in 6000 BC, before the Sahara became so dry due to reduced precipitation that the area became an impenetrable barrier to humans, forcing them out of the area. We've clearly not learned from this lesson, and on this journey I'm reconnecting with my my two best friends, Elliot and Kieran. We're pushing our adventure to the limit with our aim of spending the night in the Sahara Desert. It's about two hours without a road or directions and tourists have died there before. And we don't really want to die. Pretty much every direction is desert. Desert behind me, desert on this side, desert on this side, in front of me, just desert. But to get there is gonna also be a challenge itself. We're starting our journey in Marrakesh, which is where I am now. We need to get a car and we need to drive all the way south to a place called Mamid. Mamid is where the road ends and that's not where the desert is though. So we've got all of our stuff and we're now heading to get the car. We obviously have to get a four by four because we're going such a long way and it's gonna be some off-roading too. There's enough room for the three of us and also one of the bags. This is our Jeep that we were pleasantly surprised by. It wasn't something we'd actually asked for, so it's nice to, it's nice to have something like this. We're on the windy roads around the Atlas Mountains, going around them to this place called Eight Ben Hadou, which is where we're going to have to stay overnight, uh, which is, I think, where they filmed something from Game of Thrones as well. The next day, head to the desert and spend the night there. There's just no one here. This great expanse of road that we've been driving on. No one here, apart from us, these mountains, and that Jeep. Finally arrived on the road trip to 8 Ben Hadou and greeted by some mint tea on a terrace overlooking this incredible city, which is where they filmed Gladiator and Game of Thrones. And then we're gonna to walk to the top of this thing to watch the sunset before setting off early in the morning to the desert. Yeah, room for the boys. Boys living like kings. One, two, three beds, yeah. four walls. Even illuminated with this single bulb. I don't need anything more. Single beds, got a shower that's sometimes hot. We've got lovely views. We are about to eat some food before we hit the road. Check this view out behind me from breakfast. Absolutely unreal. And also, we're the only people here because it's so desolate and isolated. There's literally no one else. driving in the road in the middle of nowhere and you stop at the side and there's loads of these tiny little vans like this one here. This is the back of the guy's car. He has a, a proper coffee machine in there like you see in a coffee shop. No more buildings. We've been driving now for about four hours yesterday and about three hours today and I think we're only a few hours away from the desert now. There's, there's not much around at the moment. There's a few shrubs. I think it's just going to get more and more desolate until we reach the desert. That's where we've driven from, driven all the way around this road. That way. We've just had to wait because the road was blocked by these wild camels. So the plan was just to drive into the desert, but we've slowly realized it's not gonna be possible because basically the road just ended. What we have done is we found someone who is willing to drive us into the desert. I think it's probably a better plan. What they said is that people have tried in their own cars, but it's about two hours without a road or directions and tourists have died there before. We don't really want to die. We're driving into the desert with Yusuf. Welcome, it's Sahara. Finally, we're on the way. Into the Sahara. Do you think we could have driven ourselves? Or do you think it's too difficult? It's difficult. Very difficult. It's small, it's small, uh, it's small car. Straight from a goat outside. 
Thoughts? Wow, no. mm. it's sour. It's like kefir mixed with sour cream and cream cheese. Finally arrived at the desert camp, so we're driving for over two hours through the flat desert, through the stony desert before we got to the sandy part of it. And we're on these massive dunes. It's not tourist season at the moment. So there's literally no one else here because it's too hot to be here and it would just be a silly thing to be sleeping here when it's this temperature let me show you the camp because this camp is absolutely crazy we've got all of these tents along here every single tent is empty other than our tent which is over there we've got this middle bit where there's like a fire pit a sitting area here and like even a tent for eating and some sandboards as well so we definitely need to do that this is our bed for the night three beds and a little window. We might actually drag these outside because how cool would it be to sleep under the stars in the desert? That is the car that took us here for two hours, leaving in the distance. How are you gonna get home? I'm gonna catch one of those big sandworms that I saw on National Geographic. We're literally on top of the dune at this camp, which we've been taken to. They've got some sandboards, so while we're hanging around, we're gonna throw them down the sand dunes. I'm very out of breath. I actually cannot believe we're sleeping here tonight. It's very hot, 35, 40 degrees. Sweating like hell. Sandboarding was so much fun. Every direction is desert. Desert behind me, desert on this side, desert on this side, in front of me, just desert. Nothing else to be seen. Oh, what a dune. Pretty big. It's got a long way to go. better way no. to keep warm on a desert night than around a fire. As you can see behind me, pitch black, other than these little tea light candles that they've got everywhere and a campfire that they've set up for us. It's been an absolutely mad adventure here. The guys that work at this camp are all sleeping on the floor outside, which I think is so cool. And so, you know what? We're in the desert. We may as well try the same thing. So we're gonna make a bed outside and sleep here for the night. This bed here is our bed for the night. Next to the fire, you can see all the dunes in the back. Looking up at the stars in the middle of the Sahara Desert, surrounded by dunes. I feel like if you're ever going to do this, this is where you need to sleep for it. I think the novelty of sleeping outside wore off pretty quickly. And it's very, very cold. The fire's gone out and there's just this cold wind blowing over us. <laughs> Spending the night in the Sahara has to be on the list of my favourite experiences in my life. From hearing the amazing stories of people, sandboarding down gnarly slopes, taking camels to the tallest dunes and spending the night under the stars, which desert should we hit next? If you're new to the channel, subscribe to follow the adventure and the final video in the Morocco series where we nearly die on a mountain.